Hi, welcome to SBR Videos. I'm Peter Loshek. It's January 21st, and this is our uh, regular NBA uh, preview show that we're starting right now. And uh, yesterday was our first show. These lines are tough. Joe Duffy came out on the uh, on the right side of a close one, winning his first call uh, with uh, OKC minus seven and a half. Joe Duffy, thanks for being back with us. And we went 3-0 and with premium plays. Thank you, Peter. Really? 3-0. and All right. So, you know, I'm very happy to be doing uh, this show with you. You got off to a good start on our show, although these, these, these NBA lines are so tight, so tough, so many bets. You think you're going to win. Looking great in the first quarter of the first half. Wound up, lose, wound up losing by a little, sometimes by a lot. But uh, tell everyone how you're doing overall at your website uh, in the NBA this year. 56 and 36 with all basketball wow. plays, including 9-1, and one, Peter. And that's 90%. With uh, Wise Guy Plays, that's NBA and college basketball combined. NBA, Wise Guy for tonight, two college basketball at offshoreinsiders.com. Damn, very impressive, Joe W. That's an awesome record. Is that roughly in line with how you've done uh, Lifetime? Oh, absolutely. There's a reason why I've been in this business full-time for now 27 and a half years. So uh, we're going to keep winning as, as long as the guy above keeps me here on Earth. I'm going to keep winning. Well, thanks for covering these NBA lines. Those very, very tough lines, as we saw yesterday. You know, it's just tough to, uh, to suss out value. A lot of variance involved with NBA lines. Today, uh, January 21st, we have 12 games, so a lot to choose from. A bunch of borderline picks for me, and I think I've narrowed it down to three picks that I'm going to go with. We'll start with that, and you tell me uh, what you think. First pick I'm thinking of going with, uh, where are my picks? Oh, that's right. Okay. Orlando, plus eight and a half at Detroit, right? Orlando is playing a new style, up-tempo. They're very rested for this game. And, uh, you know, against top teams, maybe that won't be an effective um, style of play. But, uh, you know, against a pretty mediocre team like Detroit, as a big underdog, I, and with the extra rest scheduling spots good for Orlando, I think that might be a, a value play right there. Orlando plus eight and a half. Second pick, Memphis minus five, right? Memphis uh, coming off a loss, top team coming off a loss, always like to take them. And Toronto has been struggling recently. They are coming off of finally they got a win against Minnesota. Obviously a bad team. They won at Minnesota by just three. So, you know, they're just not a very good team coming off of, of a win against a mediocre team, against a bad team, going up against a good team off a loss. So Memphis minus five is my second pick. And then Lakers. And the, and the Pelicans under 204.5. Both these teams are very banged up. I don't care if Kobe's uh, back for this game. I think the total is too high, 204.5. I'm going to take the under on that one. Those are my three picks. Joe Duffy, have anything to say about any of those picks? Yeah, well, the key for the Orlando pick is Tobias Harris. He is questionable. He's averaging 18 points per game. Now, the Magic have actually gone over all uh, three with them, but he's done very well against Detroit, averaging 19.5 points, 6.5 rebounds. 3.0 assists. So, you know, when I was preparing for this, it was about of an hour ago, he's considered to be questionable. So I think really it depends on whether or not he's going to play. Yeah, with the Lakers, it's tough to argue with your pick there. New Orleans, three games in four days. Lakers conversely arrested. But remember, chemistry issues. And chemistry, of course, it's going to show up on defense, but really especially more so on offense. And Kobe Bryant, he is doubtful. I don't think he's going to play. And Anthony Davis and Drew Holiday are both questionable for the Pelicans, uh, you know, and they're two tremendous players. Obviously, Davis, one of the top players in the NBA, averaging 24 points per game. Holiday is pretty underrated. Remember, you know, he was buried in Philadelphia for a couple of years, but he's averaging 15.2 points per game. So when you're talking about uh, key players being in and out of the lineup, the under is generally a good percentage play. And again, I know it affects the team defense as well, but does affect chemistry a little bit more on offense. Yeah, and Lakers 1-7-1 and one over under over the last nine games. Uh, the Pelicans four straight unders. The only thing that makes you nervous is it just seems a little bit too easy. 204 and a half, very high total, but uh, you know, maybe it's not too easy. Maybe it's just a good play. And then, you know, Toronto and Memphis is a tricky one for a while this year. Toronto was a great team. Good bet against the spread, but recently they've been uh, tanking very bad, and Memphis Memphis, of course, very solid team overall coming off a loss. Five points, kind of a lot, though. What do you think about Memphis minus five? And Toronto's another team where they're playing the uh, three games in four days, and Memphis is rested. But, again, it's one of those um, cases where the public, this is a, the public usually likes betting the superior team, especially when they're more rested. So keep in mind you're going to have to pay a little bit of a premium mm. play. Don't really – Agree with that or necessarily disagree with that. Mm. All right. Well, those are my three picks as of now. Orlando plus eight and a half. Memphis minus five. 
and uh, the Lakers, New Orleans under 204 and a half. Other plays that are interesting that I'm sure people are considering, Cleveland, right? All of a sudden, they're re completely resurgent and they're playing Utah. Cleveland's minus 10 and a half, but Utah is the kind of team that uh, can't really stay within single digits of top teams in the NBA. And Cleveland might now have just turned a corner and become one of the better teams, one of the top teams in the NBA. And if so, maybe Cleveland minus 10 and a half is worth something. I was thinking about Miami, Charlotte under 185 and a half. And then, of course, you mentioned a change of pace with Orlando. I was thinking about the over there, but 209, kind of a high total. And I was thinking about Brooklyn, Sacramento under. Brooklyn, in general, a very low scoring team, and that total 197 is um, kind of high for, for a Brooklyn game. Those were the borderline plays I was thinking about. Um, do you have anything to say about, about Cleveland, Joe Duffy? What's your take on Cleveland now? Have they turned a corner, and now they're a double digit favorite at home against Utah? Cleveland is a, a team, and I haven't really looked at the futures, but I think that the, the Cavaliers still should be one of the favorites to win the NBA championship. I do think they'll turn it up a notch, whether or not Dave Blatt will last that long. There's all kinds of problems there. But uh, as far as tonight, no, I'm not going to agree with that too much. So the worst margin of cover, or the second worst margin mm -hmm. of cover team in the NBA, or some people like to call it the sweat barometer. Maybe I got to get in the habit after, you know, <laughs> for two decades calling it margin of cover, and then all of a sudden, yeah, everyone's calling it. They, they discover something that most of us knew about 20 years ago, and they call it the sweat barometer. But they're 16 and 26 against the spread. But of course, what's the key here? LeBron James, he uh, did not practice yesterday with flu like symptoms. Most of my sources in Cleveland say that he's probably going to play, but maybe less than 100%, though, if he does not play. Keep in mind that the uh, Cavaliers are 1 in 7 against the spread without him, and they've gone under 7 of 8 with him. But th that magic word again, chemistry for Cleveland and keep in mind the, the the Cavaliers are really built more so for the postseason mm -hmm. since they do their best player obviously has a couple rings I think they are capable of, of turning it on when it means something and I'm not so sure that tonight is a game that means something all right Joe Duffy 12 games on the card for a January 21st what do you have for us no we got all, all kinds of stuff and <laughs> okay. you know again I, it's, it's just a matter of uh, what are some of the best stuff. But as far as my official play for this video, I'm going to go with Houston and Golden State under the uh, total. Mm. Now, these are the two top defenses in terms of defensive efficiency, and I, I agree with that. I don't know if it's the absolute best statistic out there, but defensive efficiency and offensive efficiency, it's measured by points per 100 possessions. Uh, the Warriors are the top defensive team in the NBA based on that statistic, allowing 96.7 points per 100 possessions. And they're actually that by a pretty wide margin, by 2.4 points. And guess who's number two? Well, their opponent for tonight, Houston, at 99.1. Now, conversely, the reason, and I will tell you flat out, this is not a premium play because there is a little bit of conflicting information that the Warriors are the fastest-paced team in the NBA, and we always say that handicapping totals is more about pace than anything else, but they average 100.8 possessions per game, which is tops in the NBA. But that's really surprising. That speaks a lot to how good of a defensive team Golden State is because, you know, I, I've studied these defensive uh, efficiency statistics over the years in both the NBA and college basketball. And as a general rule of thumb, when you play a half-court game, you're going to, it's, it's less frenetic, and it's good. you're not going to get the easy baskets, but on the good side, you're not going to give up the easy baskets. When you play the more frenetic game, you're going to tend to be able to get easier baskets, but you're going to give them up more. So usually the faster-paced teams are still going to have a higher on offense uh, points per 100 possessions and lower on defense. But that's very impressive that Golden State playing such an up-tempo game, which usually means you're going to have a high efficiency on offense and a lower one on defense. But they've been extremely efficient on defense, and that speaks speaks pretty highly of uh, Steve Kerr, the job he's been doing. Okay, well, I have another reason why you might not want to make this one a premium play. You know what, it, what that is? Because you like him, and I respect no. your opinion. Because two games ago, these two teams played, and the final score in regulation, 131 to 106, 237 points scored in that game. Now you have a total of 217 and a half. I mean, Eddie, when looking to bet the under here, that's going to be making you nervous, right? Well, we definitely agree when it comes to playoff series, when you see two teams go way over the total, maybe they go over the total by 30 and they raise the total only seven or eight points. It's usually still a good overplay. There's so many dynamics that come into play in the regular season. But, yeah, all in all, 
Um, you do have a, a very good point there that that's certainly <laughs> a very compelling reason to go with the over. All right, then what about my, one of my leans, which was a Brooklyn Sacramento under right now, 197 and a half. You know, Brooklyn's kind of team that just uh, isn't playing high scoring games. Sacramento is when they're faced matched up against another team. That's one of these uh, super high tempo offenses. But, uh, you know, against Brooklyn, 197 and a half. What do you think? Yeah, as a general rule of thumb, when an up-tempo team does play a half-court team, and especially if the up-tempo team is superior, they do usually, they are able to uh, set the pace more, more times than not. But again, it's kind of a generalization. That's a game that I didn't, didn't really have any super, um, super leans either way, so I'm not going to totally agree or disagree with that pick. All right, so I guess for the picks uh, for this video, Joe Duffy like an under 217 and a half Houston Golden State. I'm going to give three picks. What the hell? Uh, Memphis minus five, Lakers and, um, and Pelicans under 204 and a half. And then I'm also going to take uh, Orlando plus eight and a half. Is there anything else in terms of uh, information you think is important for uh, people to be aware of if they're not already aware of it right now? You know, Peter, because I had a check mark to it, this is not a, a premium play, but mm -hmm. this was a game that I did have a check mark to. Why not? I'll even throw in the Dallas Mavericks because this mm. is a, a real good matchup game, the best against the worst. Dallas, the most efficient offense in the league, Barton on there scoring 110 points, uh, 110.7 points for 100 possessions. And guess who the worst defensive team is in the NBA? They're, Minnesota, they're allowing 109.9. And again, we get into that chemistry issue. Minnesota, they could have two key players coming back tonight. Nikola Pekovic and Ke Kevin Martin, both are close to returning. Both could play for tonight. But especially, especially if it is announced that they will play and the odds makers make the adjustment. Remember, one of our golden rules is, especially in the NBA, more than just about any other sport, a little bit in college basketball, but... When you get a key, play, a key player back, and in this case, possibly two key players, there is so often a step back before they take the two steps forward. So especially if it does look like that both of those guys are going to play for Minnesota and and the odds makers react to that, I think Dallas will be a very good play. Uh, right now it's minus eight and a half. I was actually looking at that game myself. I was maybe thinking about Minnesota just because Dallas off a good win against, you know, a strong, you know, Memphis team. Memphis also plays kind of a smash mouth style of play. So it's kind of like, you know, a little bit like uh, in, you know, in college football after you play LSU or after you play a tough team. Sometimes, uh, you know, the next game, you're not that great against spread. Dallas going on the road as a big favorite off of a win against Memphis. I was thinking maybe a Minnesota plus eight and a half might be a sneaky good play, but, but Minnesota is just 7-12 and 12 against the spread at home. Dallas 13-9 and nine against spread on the road, and you would lean Dallas there? Yeah, and like I said, if either Pekovic or Martin it looks like they're going to play, the line is going to go down. So I would probably wait, those of you watching this video, wait mm -hmm. until a little bit before game time. See if the line does go down, especially if the line goes down. Again, you know, Minnesota, they'll obviously be much better in the long run when they get completely healthy, but short term, there's always adjustments, and that's the, there's chemistry issues. That's why you see sometimes in the Olympics with the U.S., they had the more talented team, but they, they suffered from chemistry issues. Right. And it's the same thing here. You can't just keep bringing some players into the lineup and expect them to gel right away. We saw that with both the LeBron James team. When he went to Miami, they struggled initially. We certainly see that in Cleveland, and it hurts their chemistry even more that you know he and Love, they've been a out of the lineup, et cetera. So Minnesota, I do think... Uh, if they, if they, even if they are closer to healthy tonight, they're definitely going to have some chemistry issues early, especially because they're so poor defensively and uh, Det uh, Dallas is so efficient offensively. Yes, yeah, so true. And the NBA chemistry is so important. And the same, it's, it's just like with chicks. Like, I'm so good looking and so smart and so funny. And then I ask chicks why they don't want to date me. Chemistry is what they say. I'm like, damn it. But, you know, if it's true in the NBA, maybe it's true with chicks as well. And we've definitely seen it in the NBA. We've seen lots of teams with uh, all the parts, all the pieces, just not get it done uh, against spread or straight up. All right, Joe, so just one pick today? No, as I said, we'll, we'll give Dallas really? um, as, a, uh, as a free pick. And as I said, in, unless I get some late-breaking information, it's probably not going to be a premium pick. I know I do have three premium picks up, including a wise guy play in the NBA. But, no, we'll give Dallas – as a play for this video, plus the uh, the under on Golden State. All right, Dallas minus eight and a half. All right, Joe Duffy, thanks so much for all your thoughts. Talk to you again very soon. The SBR Network offers free sports picks and game breakdowns, big money free betting contests year round, a real time Vegas style odds monitoring service, and much more. So come see for yourself. 
To stay updated on SBR news and promotions, follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Google+. And do be sure to subscribe to the Sportsbook Review YouTube channel to catch all our daily sports shows.